Thanks, everybody, for coming. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Um, let's see, where's my agenda here? It's, it's big enough, you'd think I'd be able to see it. <laughs> I don't know why I printed out this big. Okay, first order of business is approval of the last meeting's minutes from September 27th. Has everybody had a chance to take a look at those? Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion, corrections, or additions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, the minutes are approved. Thank you. Um, we don't have any old business, so we'll jump right into new business. Uh, first case is DR 21-16, Request for Design Review, CD Downtown Zoning District, Exterior Remodel at 412 East 2nd Street, Streamline Architect, Petitioner. Dana, do you want me to give a quick overview? Yes, please. That sure. would be great, Matt. Thank you. All right. So as you guys may recall, uh, the applicant was here to discuss a design of uh, building facade improvement to the structure uh, just a couple months ago. So they've revised their plan since then after taking feedback from the board. So this is the building. It's um, outlined in yellow. It's next to Dam View. And then there is the vacant storefront that's attached to it uh, to the east. So these are just a couple of street view images just to let you know what it looks like from 2nd Street. And then um, the rendering shows the proposed building improvements. So they're adding a structural canopy above that first floor that will project roughly six feet over the sidewalk, um, adding seating underneath. And then they will be removing the first floor windows and that uh, overhead garage door and installing new black aluminum cladding uh, storefront windows and uh, entryway. The brick will just be tuck pointed and clean, so it's gray in this photo, but it will maintain that reddish brown brick color. And then the second floor windows will remain in its current uh, condition, which is a like a white vinyl window. And then, um, yep, so there's your street front. So those four uh, double hung windows will be removed. Uh, the new windows are about 24 inches taller so some of the brick below those windows and the sill will be removed and then extended closer down to the sidewalk. Uh, the window system that they're proposing, um, it's like a tri-fold window, so you could fold them to allow more air into the uh, future restaurant space that would go in there. And then um, there are some proposed streetscape improvements um, along <coughs> with that. So there is the proposed outdoor seating area. Uh, city staff is going to work with the applicant, though, and kind of uh, discuss what the Public Works Department wants to see in terms of streetscaping and what would be allowed uh, for that space. So staff is recommending approval of the building improvements, um, just subject to routine uh, city permitting. And then we're recommending a tabling of the encroachment and the streetscape agreement uh, to allow for further discussion with city staff on how to treat that area. Thanks, Matt. Have anything else to add? Uh, I'm Gil Rogers with the Architects of the Project. Um, I think Matt covered it pretty well. We already came in once, months ago, to talk about the overall big picture of development. This is the first step. The owner of the building plans to develop the first floor as a restaurant, but not do anything upstairs. Not doing anything above the front, the uh, eyebrow roof projection right now. It's simply cantilevered out of the building. It's not really touching anything below it. And as you can tell from the photos, there's no entry into the building right now, except for the back door and the overhead door. The inside of the building, there are some walls that are blown out to allow you to move from side to side. So you can act actually access from the old trash can Annie's record, record shop space. We're not going to be able to do that in the future, so the building lacks the front door. So we're trying to solve it here as sensitively as possible. And um, regarding the streetscape, look forward to meeting with city engineering and staff to figure out what the right solution is. Our 
incursion into this is simply the cantilever roof piece and then some tables. So we think it's pretty minimal, but it's a good first step for the overall development of this entire block. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Caleb? How's the, the mortar on the, on the uh, bricks? Pretty good. It seems like it's pretty good right now. Yeah. We'll probably end up simply using a light cleaner on it, and that'll probably be most of it. Chimney good? The chimney, I can't say I haven't been up to it. Can you, I don't know who's running the computer over there, can you th show the elevation that shows trash can Annie's and kind of that whole? Mm -hmm. This one, the street view? Yeah, there you go. Okay. So does that, um, the new canopy line up with that awning? Is there any relationship to that awning? No. Is the awning gonna go away at some point in time? There's no relationship to the awning. They're kind of separate things. We're not doing anything on that side. So when you talk about future development of the block, is there a master plan for the future development of that block yet? Or is this sort of there were some starting initial that? visioning documents, but they're very fluid. I mean it was an overall mixed use thing that had a lot of different parts and pieces. This is just the first part of it. And like I said, the design is fluid. We're not really sure what it's gonna turn out to be after this stage. So a little bit of clarification. I think you're mentioning in, in the staff report where we talked about the future use of the block. Um, so that whole area is owned under the same entity um, and is, at least right now is, is considered one building. Um, and so that's why we had that comment in there that really it's more the relationship we have with the rest of the building and on the long term what you're looking for for that block. Thanks, Laura. Just kind of from a um, scale perspective, any idea how far out that awning comes out into the sidewalk? It's, it's, it's a feet. six foot. It's it is six feet. feet. So it's about two thirds of the um, sidewalk there, which is the maximum they would be allowed to do per code. Yeah, it's hard to read on the left hand side. Well, I'm talking features. about the existing green awning on trash can and is that also six okay. feet or is that? I, I don't know. I think, it's less, a, I think it's a little bit less than that. It will be a one-off. It's not something that has been developed before. Okay. People that are dining on the sidewalk, like as far as uh, spacing for, I don't know. So we, we have a sort of guidelines for that? We do have a streetscape. We do have design guidelines for the streetscaping, which does cover encroachments. And generally, we, we like to see seven feet of sidewalk to make sure we have clear pedestrian access. Um, this area right now does not have any streetscaping dressing, uh, which typically takes about four feet. And that's why we need to meet um, with the, the uh, developer to kind of go through that. Um, and what are we going to do about it kind of situation? Right. I, I know um, because um, the downtown partnership also plays a role in some of that, and, and certainly the um, idea of outdoor dining is important from a, um, you know, just a public use aspect. So. Will there be, because I know the uh, Dan View next to it has some outdoor space, Side and back where there'll be opportunity for you to extend outdoor seating in the back eventually if the front is not an option? What's not noted on this site plan right now is there's, if I can point right here, there's, we need to do some flood mitigation. So there's essentially a window well thing that is going to happen in the back there and it'll take up about half of the width of the rear of the building to create this well so the water can flow through at the right elevation. So there's not much real estate left yeah. for us to do any kind of patio type thing yeah. back there. Yeah, uh, what, what Caleb's talking about is um, the whole the whole building's in the floodplain and they're electing to what's called wet flood proof, which means they're gonna let the water come in and then it's just, they're gonna have it inside where it's easy to clean and hose down and reset 
Um, and in order to do that, they have to let the water in through vents. So that's what he's, mm -hmm. that's what he's talking about. Do we give, do we give in, incentives to work in that type of area? The or design review there? board does not. The city does have some incentive programs that they would be eligible for. And how soon do you plan on opening? I, there is, the owner wants to proceed with this component as soon as possible. I don't know if that means winter construction or spring construction, depending on economic factors, but it will be soon. The, um, I, I read that, um, the, cause there's a curb cut there too, right? For the driveway, for that garage. So will that be tied up in the streetscape? That's one process. of the discussions we need to have on whether that's a requirement that take care of that now, or if this is just future planning for streetscaping and, um, and that nothing will be tied in at this time. So that, that's kind of what the discussion is. What do, are they required to do now? What has to happen later? So that they have a clear idea and we're all on the same page. And, and really none of that is part of our, our review at this point, right? Um, so per code, anything that's different from the streetscape design guidelines you'd come to review ultimately this decisions with public works for the um, permitting process mm -hmm. uh, the encro the encroachment piece uh, goes to city council uh, so they would have final decision on any of the encroachment piece of it other than they can do the canopy um, regardless so um, that that's something that city staff can approve for the canopy itself it's really just the use of the sidewalk space Thanks, Kim. And the materials are on here, I believe, right? The, um, it's aluminum. Durable flag. aluminum panels on the, the canopy piece. And then durable aluminum storefront and glazing for those two, the, the two openings. So there's, there's nothing extravagant about it. It's something that's just durable that will give the owner 30 years of life for whatever they're doing before they have to service it again. No, not not at this stage. It probably will be later when it's fully developed. But we're kind of wanting to talk with city engineering for what the streetscaping wants to be before we go down that path. Right, because the typical streetscaping does have lighting. So that would be one of those discussions if, if lighting isn't part of the streetscaping plan, if they'd want to do something. <laughs> something that Caleb and I had talked about on Friday is I have a slight concern about the ability to provide signage for the building um, with the way that the canopy's positioned. Um, I want to make sure that they, they're not boxing themselves in. Um, so th that was something we had a conversation with. They're not to a point yet where they've discussed signage, though. Um, so. Is that it is almost something that can be like etched into that window above the doors or something or built into that overhang a little bit? Uh, they, they could do some window signage. That okay. would be something that they could do. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Would somebody like to make a motion? I move that we accept. Thank you. I second. Any further discussion? I just asked for a quick clarification. Is that with this, um, with the tabling part part of it too for the encroachment and streetscaping? So building improvements are okay. So the motion is to accept the canopy and the windows as shown um, with the streetscape to be um, at a further at a future date. All right, everybody clear. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Motion carries. That's great. Thanks. That's very nice. Okay. So, uh, let's see. All right, guys, I lost my... In all these giant pieces of paper, I've lost my agenda. You could read from the PowerPoint. Thank you. Oh, there you go. 
Case DR 2117, request for design review CD, downtown zoning district, construction of a new park at the northeast corner of West 5th Street and Brady Street. Streamline Architects petitioner on behalf of Friends of MLK Park. So right. this is a pretty cool one. And they're, they're not to a point where they're asking for a, a final decision. This is more of presenting where they're at with things now and, and asking for some feedback. Do you want to? So th this is city owned land that uh, is being leased to the Friends of MLK Park um, at the corner of Brady and Fifth Street. Um, so that with the plans to redevelop it, it's a really awesome opportunity. This was a former um, parking structure and it has been kind of an eyesore to be honest. Uh, and so this is a really awesome opportunity to, to get this in an, a really nice state um, so those are some of this, what it looks like right now. Um, I want to go next. And then, um, here's some of the renderings. So the, the concept and, and um, Streamline can definitely jump in is to do, uh, to celebrate MLK Jr. Um, and there would, it would be kind of almost an outdoor art gallery um, with some permanent um, fixtures to put art in and then um, on the fifth street side on the south side of the property it's a, a standing a freestanding uh, fixture with um, MLK Jr's profile cut into it and then some text um, from speech on it um, the concept would also include an outdoor entertainment space um, and so there's the MLK and it's frames the entertainment space. Um, so it, it would have, um, at least conceptually at this point, some exterior lighting, um, some, some, either some turf or some actual grass that's, that's still being discussed, some seating area. It would be kind of a, a flex space to a certain extent. Um, it would involve railing along the retaining wall, wall portion, um, and there would be uh, some uh, concrete or pervious surfaces are two. Um, and I think, is that all of the, no, so there's, it, it would have some railing, like I said. Um, and generally that, that idea is to match the, there's some tree wells, uh, on fifth street that that would kind of mimic. Um, there's a picture of it, kind of a flex space. Yeah, you can come. <laughs> and so, yeah, they're just looking for feedback. I don't know if you want to ask specific points where you're looking for feedback. We did provide in the staff report the, the guidelines section related to uh, what they say about plaza space. And so you're looking at lighting. You're looking at interaction with the um, street. Uh, you're looking for landscaping, um, what the fixtures look like and that they tie in uh, cohesively. Um, those types of things are related to the design guidelines. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, Laura. Um, I'm Andrew Dasso, uh, principal with Streamline, and Maggie Otto with uh, RTN now. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but uh, <clears throat> you know, we we developed the concept back in April, May, and. Um, we're ready to begin construction documents for the project. We have a team ready to begin, but uh, before we um, begin development of the drawings, we wanted to review the design with you all uh, to make sure that we don't spend any unnecessary time developing drawings that um, would not be accepted or um, along those lines. So the design, um, ML, friends of MLK have uh, occupied the first floor of the apartment building on the um, east side of the park um, for the last couple of years, and they um, have had plans for this area and this park. Um, their plans initially maybe were a little too extravagant, so um, what we've tried to do is bring a concept that is feasible um, and to celebrate the history of MLK but also the history of uh, Davenport and um, 
black history, Hispanic history. Um, and so the concept, uh, this site was actually home to the first um, black owned business. It was a jazz club, Big Spider back, and uh, a Louis Armstrong had played in it. Um, so the stage is kind of resemblance of the um, the, the club and, and being able to uh, have events here. The display boards uh, surrounding the park, um, those are used, those are designed so that they're, um, the actual panels are removable. And so that, uh, like last month was Hispanic Heritage Month and uh, we could replace the panels with Hispanic Heritage and the whole park becomes a kind of multi-purpose uh, event space. The, uh, the second tier is already, that's an existing uh, tier. Um, Place some benches and other things. The gateway sign, um, that is an original idea and concept. We're hoping that we can achieve it. Um, so during this process, we found out that if you use the bust of Dr. Martin Luther King, you have to pay the family X amount of dollars. Um, so we are looking for ways to signify this is a park for Martin Luther King. And so using his profile um, by doing that. And <clears throat> the materiality of that gateway, um, you know, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to have a steel substructure to it, um, cladded in probably either aluminum or um, black uh, powder coated paint with either, um, it'd be really cool if we could find a way to get the, the actual script um, to be backlit and have some sort of uh, lighting. Um, we've talked about the script not being the I have a dream uh, speech, but being the speech that he, Dr. Martin Luther King gave at the, uh, at Palmer College. So, uh, there is that script. I don't know it firsthand, but um, Ryan and uh, Ryan Sadler and Michael Guster are aware of it and will we'll be able to provide it for us. So, well, I'm really excited about this project. I think it's a kind of a, a great use for the space. We're hoping that we can um, make it so that it's usable all throughout the year, not only on event days, but place you can go and enjoy your lunch or, um, or have uh, smaller events with vendors and other ways to set up. Um, lighting, you know, we're going to look for ways to have soft lighting, not so much like overhead cobras, and but more of a pathway lights. The display boards will be lit. Um, there's actually even a hanging um, chandelier over the, uh, over the stage. Um, so this is the concept as of today, and we're hoping that we can begin construction documents and land within a budget that's feasible for the kinds of MLK and, and provide an amenity to the city of Davenport. So. Thank you, Andrew. You guys have some questions, comments? Um, couple questions. Will those panels all have their own backlay? Um, I imagine, they look lit in the yeah, it'll be more of like a picture light. Okay. Um, okay. From um, the structure above. And then what are all those tables for? Are those for like art vendors? Those uh, are benches. Those are the benches? shown there are benches. benches. <laughs> yeah. Benches. Never mind then. Yeah, and uh, you know, I think as we kind of develop the design, we'll kind of well the specification for the bench. And yeah. And I am just curious, um, security wise, it looks like a really lovely park. Will the there be some sort of cameras or something on on it yeah we've uh that's the beauty of having the building next door and being a, a tenant of the building um they're we're planning to have security um on the park as well as uh maybe even security lighting okay. um coming off the building okay. um 
there's other challenges that we've discussed, though. One of the reasons that we like to use our official tariff would be the dogs and, yes. you know, um, so, because um, this is kind of, this actual concrete pad is being used for dogs currently, so. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it'll stop a dog if a dog has to go back. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't stop my dog, but. <laughs> <laughs> I have a comment to make. Um, um, just as an aside, we did have some people in the Quad Cities that were strong proponents of Martin Luther King, uh, like Monsignor Modit uh, and various other religious clergy, et cetera, et cetera. So you might want to explore that avenue just because there is some connection here with the Quad City uh, people at that time. Also, uh, we have... Uh, I'd like to see a water element, I don't know why, but like a miniature scale reflective pool would be nice. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. So just something to think into if it's if it's feasible. Um, that's just my opinion. So and it, the water always adds a little bit of, uh, I don't know, it just adds a little bit of comfort to uh, a space. And if you can get it so it's low upkeep and it doesn't, collect a lot of leaves or debris, then it's even better. So it's a little maintenance. Right, you just mentioned a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can, you can, you don't have a lot of trees in your space, so that's a big plus for keeping leaves out. But you know, you get debris like pop cans, beer cans, et cetera, that do show up. But we do have a wonderful parks department would love to clean it up. So. <laughs> Andrew, I have a quick question. What are you, what's the treatment for the existing training, uh, uh, retaining wall? Is it just something you're going to parge and clean up or? Uh, that's our hope. Okay. So it is fairly large. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Can you make it graffiti proof too? <laughs> graffiti proof, yeah. <laughs> Well, I think it's a really exciting project, and um, I, I love the, the simplicity, but yet um, there's a lot of interesting elements going on. I do uh, mention the trees. I do have a question about shade, because I know, you know, in the middle of the summer when you want to use the space without some sort of shade, whether it's an architectural structure or plant, it, could, it can be kind of brutal in some of these spaces. So do, have you considered that at all, or...? Well, the original concept had trees everywhere. No. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I think um, it's a great point. I, um, it'd have to be in a way that um, less maintenance and tree, that, that's part of the reason they, um, Shunned us away from the trees was the maintenance of the trees. And I feel like trees would detract from all of the lines of what you got going on. So I guess I'm just wondering yeah. maybe there's a way to do it, expand on some other sort of structural yeah. element or something. Even but in the corner, maybe uh, where are, those display boards are. What do they call those things now? The pergolas? But the pergolas without with a little more, mm -hmm. a little more covered. The pergolas have the vertical. They don't have a lot of shade, but you add a little bit more. Shade on the top, as opposed to pergolas have. You know, the sun goes right through it. But you can space those out. I think this area, like you know, uh, this area here, could there be yeah. maybe a way to integrate shade or structure? Maybe the top part. So you know those, um, not really the pergolas, but they have them at some other parks where they're almost like a stretched canopy type thing. It's very yeah. simple. Doesn't really take away and deter anything. Um, the park, but mm -hmm. it adds some kind of shape. Yeah, canopies look nice if you identify it. Mm -hmm. And they're like really tight. I don't, I don't know what they're called. They're really tight, and there's just like more like a couple of books. They don't take up a lot. I think they might be called shade sails. Is that? Yeah, they look yeah. like sails. So that way, there is, there is that kind of version. Yeah. But I really like, I like the direction. I like the. Um, 
the concept a lot. And I, I would hate to see any kind of shade thing distracting from it, but at the same time, it just would make it more usable. Yeah. Those months when you really want to be outside, but don't want to have that sun blasting on you. I know like the, like the figgy courtyard hardly ever gets used because there's just not enough shade. Even with the trees that are there, there's not enough shade to, to really make it comfortable. Do you think the, um, the art panels would provide any shade, or are they not tall enough? To... Um, they're only 12 feet tall. Okay. Another element with Davenport is a kind of a mister area where it mists air or water into the air. Most of the time we don't need that because it's so humid here, but it is a nice water element for kids, uh -huh. and they're very low maintenance. Uh -huh. So that's that's a that's an option. You leave that on the on the paver side. You don't put it on the the grass side. So it, the paver side will if you can drain it, it'll go right in the city drain. It yeah, won't throw a lot, a lot of water off, but it will throw some off. Do you have any questions specifically on any of your um, fixtures you're planning? That you is there anything you wanted to ask related to whether your your um, your benches, your railing, um, the bike um, station area, anything that you're looking for more specific feedback from the board on? Um, I guess how do we, when it is time to select a bench, how do we make that selection? Um, well, you can, some as staff, and, and, and please, you can step in it. Um, you can piecemeal as much as you would like. So if, if you want in a month or two when you finalize the, the more of the civil piece of it, um, if you want DRB to review that piece and then you can keep moving along with the fixtures as you go. Um, or if you want, it's up to the board's discretion on, on how they want to approve it. If they want, they can approve a generalized style. Um, they could... They could say, you know, as long as it's X, Y, and Z, work with staff and, and give staff level approval on it. That That's up to the board on how they'd like to move forward with the general overview. But um, we can take it in pieces if you need to, um, is what I'm saying. You don't need, need to come with a complete final design. Because um, I, I do know that there are some phases associated with this. You know, honestly, I really think that, um, you know, you're going to select something that obviously works with, with your overall concept and if you're not gonna deviate from that. So I, I mean, I'm pretty comfortable that it, it's gonna be within the, the guidelines that we have and, and, um, and certainly is going to meet the, the concept that you are wanting to, to portray as well. So I, I'm, I'm not too worried about that. I think- I would just avoid metal seats <laughs> if there's a shade issue. Yeah. But I mean, I love the wood. Yeah, I make it comfortable and inviting, you know, something that people like to see. And also safe. That's one thing that people, if they don't perceive safety in an, an area, then they don't really go into the area. Yeah. I do like the addition of whether it's turf or grass, that, that natural element in there. I think that will also help soften the space and make it even feel cooler just by the nature of it being, being grass. Thank you. Is the, um, is that designed to be a true performance stage? We are, we haven't gone to a level of uh, audio visual. Um, so I, I, I assume if a band is playing or if they have a performance, they're likely running equipment. And, and so it, it's probably not to the level of like the spider back pavilion or there. Mm -hmm. um, you may want to approach the Arts Commission or Arts Commission and ask them if they have any weekend venues for uh, budding artists just to get them integrated into your um, and involved because then you can have a little more public uh, interaction, I guess. 
we'll we have talked about you know um, running a, a conduit to a section of the lawn that would allow for hookups and and um, and that would be my recommendation from what we've done with like the rust belt and concert venues is you could run like a 12 inch pack and then they could bring in whatever they want and because every performer or performance is going to have something different it's more focused on local artists and stuff i don't have a big plant but well so if anyone wants to use it will that be pushed through because it's a park through like the city or will that be through Uh, I, I would have to look at the terms of the lease, um, but there there is a lease, so I think that the um, the lease is at city-owned property. I, we'd all partner together. We want to support this park. I'm sure the downtown Davenport partnership would also um, help support that too. But the overall maintenance and the improvements are part of the Friends of MLK Park. Okay. And what's the what's the zoning right now for this downtown zoning district? Seems like there will be great programming opportunities in the space. Well, and especially with the Lincoln Center right up the road, too, and yeah. getting mm -hmm. more adults and, yeah. and doing stuff with them and kids and utilizing the other spaces in there as well. If it's on fit for radio, it will be exposed to the VIX, too. Yeah. So maybe, I don't know how you could work that in, but you might want to try to figure an angle there. Is there still some public parking around there somewhere? Um, I think that there is a lot on the other side of um, Brady um, that the city still owns, but they might be leasing it to um, a private entity. Um, so there, there's, I'd have to double check. I'm not sure what kind of off-street parking is around there. Is there, is there parking for the tenants? I'd have yeah, to double check. Just, space. There's some. The apartment tenants have parking lot on the north side. And we will have, uh, I think, four or five stalls. It's not shown here, but this area here, um, if we can navigate around the light pole. And that'll be for either the band or handicap. I'm set up, tear down. Oh. Oh, and that lot is also owned by the city. I think that the there at least north. had been some discussions on, on having that leased to the, um, the property owner to the north there um, with possibly they, they were looking at doing outdoor dining at one point. I don't know if that's still on the table or not. Um, but yeah. yeah. You said a bus. Does it cost money to get a bus? Is that correct? Of MLK or Martin? Yes. What about, is a bus just the top or is it the whole body? I mean, technicality. You, you know, it's them standing there with this over here. <laughs> the arms crossed and, yeah, I think it's. I think the profile is brilliant. I like that. So if we made our own up, it wasn't a bus, rather a whole body one? Would that cost money? Just to make it Sounds fun. like anything that's three-dimensional is going to yeah. cost money. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any plans for the fencing from the upper uh, area to the lower? It's currently shown just because there is a fall risk. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think safest bet at this point would be to match the around the uh, trees on uh, that kept those. That's just a simple ornamental fence. Um, there's supposed to be trees in those grates? I have asked about that. <laughs> um, so um, apparently there is a water main very, very close to it, but I talked to the arborist and he thinks that he might have a tree variety that wouldn't have a super deep root structure that might fit in those tree wells, but I'm on it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good for you. Built up into like a nice flower. 
So that yes. gives you a good sense of what that retaining wall looks like. Yeah, it's not in the best of shape right now. So will it just get like cemented over it? Like smoothed out? Yeah. You know, maybe we have to we haven't surveyed it for mm -hmm. the moment. Um, I think there's several issues with it. The overgrown plants and trees, it could be just cleaned up and Yeah. That's one that is actually part of the concept. Maybe it extends the cross fit yeah. along the Mm -hmm. Oh, I noticed that through looking through. It's like a musical scale. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, so the, the fencing that's there, I mean, it's kind of already fencing right now from the upper to the lower. Would that be replaced as yeah. like a nice metal black or something? Like yeah. Martin Luther King family, or do they want to be involved with this in any respect? Or? I haven't, um, but I can't speak for the Friends of MLK. Um, that Brian, might be a nice thing to do, just to throw them a low. We're thinking about doing this. And they might want to do it their own way, but we would have, obviously, a way to... You want to do it your way, and if you get them involved, maybe they might want to hear another way. I'm just, just a question to you, if you want to do that or... I think that would probably be more up to the friends of the MLK organization, really yeah. more so than you guys, right? Yeah, they've been um, they've been on this journey uh, since that building was built. So, yeah, a little little background on that in case you don't remember um, that building finished in about 2016, I think. Um, so it, it's a fairly new building, um, and the. Fifth Street there is actually a permeable paver. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've taken a look at it, but um, that that that's one of the um, stormwater management projects that the city did um, to help with some flash flooding in that area. Anybody else have anything to say, or do you guys have any other questions for us? I think it looks fantastic. I do too. I really do. I think we might do some from the old, like with that brown part that's showing. Um, when you come out of the building, kind of to match that a little bit. I think you've answered a lot of, um, you know, different programming opportunities showing the fact that you could do a little farmer's market in there or, or certainly entertainment. And, Keeping the space flexible and open is really, I yeah. think, a good idea for that space. All right. Yeah. Thank you. I think you guys did a great job. And I don't think we have anything else on our agenda, do we? Anything else anybody wants to bring before the group? If not, I will adjourn this meeting. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming, you guys. Great work. There's a recycling bin nearby. I can. <laughs>